Hey everyone, welcome to this edition of Sport Fishing on the Fly. Today, it's all about approaching a lake. As you can see behind us, we've got a gorgeous little lake we're fishing at. Unfortunately, we can't tell you where we're at. It's one of those little gems. But what we want to do is show you the things that we go through when we get to the lake to decide what we're going to use when we get out on the lake. Yeah, and the perfect way I like to start off is I take my trusty little strainer. Always really nice to have a strainer. Get the boats all set up, get the rods rigged. I'll take my strainer, my throat pump, and a couple of valves. And I like to go and mooch around on the weeds. I'll go and mooch around the weeds and see what's in there. Danzels, mayflies, dragonflies, whatever I can get, I'll try to put in that vial and match the colors. That's the key is the colors, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Because you want to get, like, because damsels and mayflies all come in different colors. If you can match a color, your success rate's going to be that much better. To that lake, you've, if you've, especially if you've never fished that lake, you have to know the colors in that lake. And the best way, again, is all the food items are in that shallow water in the weeds. Right. That's where you're going to find them. Well, I got my trusty little items here. I got something <laughs> for digging the stuff out of the mud because I don't want to put my nymph net down in yeah. the mud because I'll break the wooden thing. Yeah. Well, let's get down there and yeah. see what we can find. Yeah. You know what I like to do too is get get my feet in the mud. That's what this is for. You get your feet in the mud and you kind of stir it up. But you got to be quick because some oh, of these bugs move fast. really fast. You know right? what moves really quick are dragonflies. If you see a dragon, and you got to grab them fast because they can pull. There's a dragon. Oh yeah, there. Look at that. Another mayfly there. Take your trusty little little pump and put them in there. Get them in the vial. Fantastic. There's so much aquatic life here, it's amazing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Got some great samples. So lots of samples there. Really nice. But you know, an important thing to do in here too, one that people should take note of is go and mooch around the weeds where no one's going to be fishing. I mean, right. obviously no one's going to fish in this little bay because it's <laughs> yeah. a foot deep and it's full of bugs, but right. it's a really good place to look and don't do it where people fish. This is still representative of what's going to be out there. Exactly. It's the same thing. Yeah. Well, we should go and... Uh, look at this one here. That guy's eating everybody. You got the big dragon in there and he's a, eating. We got a big green darner dragon and he's taking on a this little dula day, this new little dragonfly. He's, he's got him, him clamped right he, now. Yeah, he ate our mayfly. We got a damsel in there that's not gonna last long. This yep. guy's telling everybody. We got some real nice other ones here. A lot of people call these the gomphus dragons, but they're actually Well, they're the clear ones, yeah. Yeah, little day. That's what their new term is. That was Brian Chan was telling me. What's important is you match <laughs> get the a color. bug that size that's that color. That yeah, looks you like got a dragon, chance. and that one's a really neat color too. It's got the green and the black on it. You know, another really good key is when there's damselflies out, is they crawl up the reeds, and you'll actually see the trailing shock left behind from the damselfly on the reeds. So if you come to a lake, check out the reeds too. And you'll actually see the damsel drying his wings there for yeah. a good hour before you. Yeah, if they're too. actually hatching yeah. that day. So we got damsels in here. That might be a good thing to start with. We got the mayfly nymphs. I think mays are going to be good too, and. Uh, Pretty got, soon there's uh, going to be nothing left in there because that dragon's yeah, going to have it all eaten. Dragon. Oh, got a little baby boatman in there too. A little baby boatman and plus you're going to get the chronomids. You're going to get a ton of chronomids out there and that's always something that you're going to get out by throat sampling the fish. You're going to get a good idea what chronomids are hatching. Good. So well, it should be a good day. Yeah, we've got lots of patterns. <laughs> Hopefully that's going to match that up. Yeah. We'll show you those when we're back in just a minute, so don't go away. windy out here today. What a day of fishing though, it's, uh, it's been tough. You know, we went through the whole setup at the beginning of what to look for and what not to look for and what to do well. What well, I got this guy on was a, a coronamid. And we've been, we've been working hard with the mayflies and with the damsels because that's what we saw in the dragonflies because that's what we saw. I got the long leader on, which of course you need to. It's typical coronamid setup I got on right now. Probably in, well, I guess in 12 to 14 feet of water and just trying to get it so it's a foot off the ground, and, and I did. So get the net ready. Yeah, but tell them the real story. What story? We were having our lunch, <laughs> as always. <laughs> That's the best part. Dawn comes over, <laughs> and, uh, and we, we're just all starting to chronome the fish, and chronome is very conducive to eating, which is, of course, a good thing, right? cast out there and I'm reaching, I got the bag in the back there past them and all of a sudden I could feel my rods going like this and he's yelling at me, you got a fish on. So you always have to hold on to your rod when you're chronomid. Oh yeah, if I didn't have a hold of this it would have been long gone. 
Okay, let's see if we can get this guy up here. Oh, it's a pretty fish. Yep. There we go. Now, it'll probably be a good idea to do a throw sample on that guy. I think this guy's big enough for that yet. And right on the corner of the lip. Find you the pump there, and I'll even give you a nice little vial. There we go. Okay. Well, let's see what we got here. Nice, uh, good fighting fish. So again, you get the water out, get it wet. Oh, guess what? We didn't get the throat sample. We got nothing. And you didn't get to see the fish either, did you? That's kind of too bad. Ah, he slipped away. But it's been a tough day of fishing so far, but the good thing is they're starting to come on the coronamids. It's just a matter, like we were noticing earlier, the fish were just kind of cruising, but they weren't, they weren't actively feeding. They looked, what did you see? You had a good word for it. Happy fish are feeding fish. And when the fish aren't happy, they just don't feed. <laughs> oh, there's a double header. <laughs> Well, I popped this guy on the snow cone. What do you think, Granny? Good one for the bench? You snow bet, yeah. I've seen a lot of different varieties of it, so it'll be interesting to see how you tie it on the bench. Yeah. Because it might be a little different than what I got on here. All right, well, just a little guy, but still a, still a decent fish. Now, obviously, this fish is so small that you wouldn't you wouldn't dare throw pop him because he is so small, and there's a, just slipped out of his mouth. And he is just a little baby, but still, he fought nicely. Let's hold him up for everybody. A quick light. There he is, just a little guy. Nice, brilliant colors, though. He wants to go. Let him go. What I'll do is I'll give you a good, a good shot of the snow cone I have on right here. And that's the fly we're using. Nice little chronomid pattern. And here he is here. The reason they called him a snow cone is because the body's built and tapered like a snow cone has a real thin butt and goes up to a nice white head, just like a, an ice cream cone. So what I think we'll do right now is we're going to go to the bench and I'll tell you my, tie you up my version of the snow cone. Hi everyone, and welcome to the bench. Well today we're going to tie you up the snow cone. Now the snow cone is a chronomid pattern and it works exceptionally well when the black chronomids are emerging. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we're going to use a TMC 2312 size 12. We'll use some UTC 70 black thread, a 330 seconds white bead, some night glow or white super floss for the rib, some black furry foam for the body, and some black furry foam for the thorax. First step to the chronomid is put your bead onto the hook. I've slid my little white bead right on the hook, and I'm going to put down a good base of my black tying thread, just so that the furry foam won't slip when I tie it in. I've taken one strand of my Night Glow Super Floss, or White Super Floss, and we're going to go to the bend of the hook and tie this in and stretch it. Just pull this nice and tight so you get a nice thin butt section. And we'll keep that off the back for the ribbing later. I've taken some black furry foam and I've cut about a 1 8 wide strip of the black furry foam and I've put a small little notch on the end here, cut it into a bit of a point, just so it'll go on my hook nice and thin. So we're just going to tie it into the back of the hook. Again, stretch it out, but don't stretch this black furry foam too much or else it'll break. Now that we have our furry foam tied in, we're going to start wrapping the body. And here's the important part, is keep the furry side of the furry foam towards, or the inside, toward the hook. So you want the furry foam to be laying down, the furry side, onto the hook. And you'll see as you wrap, I'm pulling this fairly tight, and you'll see all these little hairs will start showing up on the body, and that's what we want. Now that I've wrapped my black furry foam in, I'm not going to cut off the excess. I'm going to leave the excess up on the top for the thorax later. Now we're going to take our super floss, pull it fairly tight, and start ribbing the body. And we're probably going to put about five to six ribs on here, and as we get further up on the body, we're going to slacken off make these ribs just a little bit wider. The last step to the fly is to take our black furry foam that we had sitting there left over and I'm going to take about two to three wraps just to form the thorax on the fly. And we want the furry side out so that it shows up. 
finish the fly off, we're going to whip finish. And again, we're going to whip finish behind the bead, just in front of the last patch of furry foam we put in for the thorax. And that finishes off the fly. And there it is, the finished snow cone. You know, the nice thing about this furry foam is it really gives the fly a lifelike appearance. I think we got ourselves a good fish. I actually caught it out there, it was over beside Pete where I picked him up on the snow cone, one that Don just tied on the bench for you or a facsimile there of one. And he took this coronamid and took me right out to my backing. Screamed way, way down. So unfortunately, I had to cut right in front of where these guys are fishing, which yeah, thanks a lot. if these weren't people that I didn't know, I would never have done that. I really appreciated that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, it's funny because we talked about being observant when you come out. And what we noticed early on, there was lots of, uh, oh, sedge hatching. So what we were able to actually get a couple hits on, but we weren't able to hook any fish up on, was uh, caddis emergers. Now let's see where this guy's taking it. There's a snow cone. Look at that fish, eh? Isn't that beauty? That guy there, well we've got the measuring here. This is a 16 incher. 16 inch rainbow there, nice chromey. 16 inch rainbow and he took me into my backing and I have a six weight rod. And he gave me a little reviving, there he goes. From the shore and back out he goes. Wow, well you know, we get a chance to see a lot of new products, to get to fish with a lot of really neat stuff and that's why we do the technology segment. So why don't we head over to the technology now and check out some new equipment. Today in the technology, I want to show you another new innovative product from the guys at Outcast. It's called the Power Pack. What's really neat about it, I'm going to show you in just a minute, but first let me show you some of the features. It's got a dual air chamber in it, good for safety in case one of them goes down, which of course on an Outcast they never do. It's got an aluminum frame, good ore locks, it's got a motor mount on the back so you can put an electric motor on it, and it's got a great anchoring system. But first, let me get out here and I'll show you what's really cool about this system. Okay, yours away, grab my rod. What's really neat about this, it's got a four inch styrofoam floor on it, so you're ready to fish. You have to stand up, pick your fish, and away you go. Another great new product from the guys at Outcast. So we've had to resort to wet line techniques, and it's actually, really handy that we went in and looked in shore to see what color things were. Oh, this is a nice fish. But you know what I got this guy on? What'd you get him on? Well, was one of, uh, one of Pete and Kelly's uh, favorite patterns oh. called the LGF. Oh yeah, and it's like a damsel fly imitation. It looks just like a damsel, it's green, and this one matched the damsel that we found on shore earlier. Yeah. At the beginning. It just matches it to a tee. It's got the right color, and that's the importance of doing the type of stuff we did earlier, because oh. you get my rod out of the right here. Yeah, very important. So again, it was really, really important that we went in there, you know, mooched around in the weeds, and, and saw the colors that were in here. You can see by the lake, it is a very clear marl. It's a green type marl, bottom. And usually, the insects take on the color of their natural habitat because right. they have to hide themselves obviously from predators. Well you know what I did, I went for a cruise around the lake, you guys stayed here and yeah. I thought we hadn't had any luck for a long time so I was going to go for a cruise. I had to come to shore first before I went for my cruise yeah. and I noticed there was lots of dragonflies, like adult dragonflies oh, on the shore. Okay. Yeah. And we looked at one earlier, we had the darner and, and those little ones, the ones I the can't pronounce. The big darner and the little 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 yeah. bit. Those. I can't, yeah those ones. <laughs> But anyway, Lula days. Lula, Lula, Lula days. a really good pattern for trolling around is a halfback because a halfback can be a dragonfly. Yes. It's about the size of the darner and I actually picked up about a 17 incher down at the end of the lake. We're too far yeah. away from camera. It's a little guy there, a little LGF, and that's a nice fish. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a throat sample of this guy. He's big enough to throat sample. And I'm going to see what he's been feeding on. Yeah. See, uh, he did take that the LGF, which is a Danzel limitation. So let me just get a sample here. Yeah, here's, here's the right way to do it. Not the way I did it or tried earlier. <laughs> <laughs> get the pump nice and wet. Make sure there's no water left in it. Got that part right. Turn the fish upside down. This is what I messed up on. And just insert it till it stops. And then slowly. Oh, pull look it at the out. amount of food he's got there. He's just <laughs> chock full he's been of chowing, food. Yeah. He's been chowing. So what we'll do? Show everybody. Yeah, it's a nice fish. It's a nice fish. Yeah. Yeah, he's a decent size. He's been fat. Far real good. Yeah. But you know, in this lake, there's some really, really big fish. Well, really that's large. why we we wanted to come here, but also to mainly talk about how we approach a lake. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, Look at that. Dragonfly. There's a big dragon in there right now. There's yeah. a, a chewed up damsel. <laughs> Some cronies. A whole bunch of small, little, green cronies. Yeah. Just a ton of them. Well, I'm gonna... But, oh, big well, there's, there's a nice big crony right there. Yeah. Big brown. Big, that's why the snow cones worked earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Big so it just shows you. And wow. that tells it all right there. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Well, we were kicking over here because I had a fish on, yeah. on the half back. He got oh, off man. halfway back. And you had, we had a double header there for a second. Gee. Well, the crazy thing is right now, I'm not sure what they're doing. I'm going to show you the setup and everything we have right now. Well, like Grant was saying, he was kicking back. You had a nice fish on. Yeah. And you got him on the half back. Yeah. And, and it, was, it was slow. I was stripping slow because things seemed to have slowed down, or I thought they had. So I was stripping quite slow. What I was doing was kicking back to get over here to talk, and uh, bang, this guy had at a real high speed, like really high speed. What we're using today, I've got a Marriott five weight rod here, because the fish aren't really big in this section. Right. So five weight rod's able to handle it. Got our nice Marriott CMR reels with uh, Your uh, five weight for it. Yeah. Aqualux line, which is made by a reel. It's, it's a real nice clear intermediate sink line. On the end of that, I probably put how much there? Three feet? Oh, a little more than that, probably Four? five. Yeah. Well, five? Yeah, that's yeah, what would I got too. Five feet of fluorocarbon tippet. Yeah, the rule of thumb is longer in a lake and shorter in a river. Oh, he's gone under the log there. He's trying. He's trying, yeah. Hey, man. Yes. Nice sized fish. Ah, another little guy. Oh, look at his gill, too. He's been hacked. They're all about the same size here, it looks like. Well, we're in this, this uh, smaller half of this lake. And they are smaller fish over here, I'm noticing. Nothing like the big ones. The big ones yeah. over on the other side are really big. Well, there's that guy there for you. Let's hold him up. He's not a bad size. A nice little fish. Well, they give you good scrap. Oh, I've had two of them go out to my great. backing today. They're really good. And he's fat. You don't worry about it. to throw it down for him. There he goes. Nice little fish. Nothing huge, but nice. Yep, it was good. The thing is, again, you have to change up for the situation. We were chronometing pretty hard. We saw the colors of the bugs early yep. in the day, so we know what colors to put on. And we mashed it, and what we had to, went with the, with the wet lines and got them. Yep. The fish. There's a good one. All I've done with my Aqualux line, cast it directly up wind. Let out a little line and just let the wind take me down, almost like wind drifting. And I've got the, the LGF one, which is a little damsel imitation. Oh, he's not huge, but he's got, got a little more meat to him. Not a bad fit. Oh, he's tough. Boy, this guy's doing tough. Yeah, not a bad fit. Oh, okay. Oh, now that's a better fish. That's a little better size. Get the LG up out of there. Get the top lip. Oh, that is a nice size. Now that's a little better. Kind of what we've been expecting. Just show everybody before I let them go. There he is there. That is a nice, healthy rainbow. That's more like the size we're expecting. Even a little bit bigger. Let's get him back in the net. 
Yeah, let's get him ready to go here. He's not going to take one. Oh, there he goes. Straight down right in the morrow. Well, again, with that LGF one, real good pattern. Works just like a damsel fly. Real nice slow retrieve. You just want to give a little tweaks, let it drift downwind. Real effective way to do it, especially with this intermediate sink line.